Hi, and welcome back to Pentel Cars, Cornish Car Collectors. I'm Andy, and as you can see, today we're on a road trip. We're off to Wales to pick up a real garage find, a car that was made in 1984, and the previous owner, a chap called Jack, bought it in 1986 and has owned it ever since. The car's only done 44,000 miles. Now, sadly, Jack died in 2008, and the car went in the garage and hasn't come out until today. So join us as we drive from Cornwall up to Wales, across the bridge, and, uh, and we collect the car on this beaver tail that we've hired from uh, to and fro there in Honiton. Okay, so here we are in wet southern Wales uh, in Skewen. We've got the van down this quite narrow access lane here, and this is it, the garage, where we're going to unveil the garage find, a car that's been in here since 2008, a 1984, 44,000 original miles. Ford Sierra 1.6 GL. It's lovely to see the Sierra here in this garage where it spent the last 12 years when, since sadly Jack passed away, but actually where it's been for the past 35 years, as Jack bought it in 1986, when it was just two years old, with 10,000 miles on the clock, and we've got the original bill of sale, and sat here now, it's done 44,000 miles. Now, sadly, it's not running at the moment. It was emitted in November by Ian, who purchased the garage, but it's not running at the moment, so we're gonna have to use the winch to, uh, to get it up on the trailer. So let's, uh, let's get it out. So we made it back with our 1.6 GL Sierra and uh, after a couple of days we've actually got it running. It's a bit spluttery from cold but having said that it has been at rest for the past 12 years. So we've ordered a new automatic choke, we've ordered some HT leads and it's going into Torpoint MOT and tyres to have that fitted uh, next week and also a bit further work just to make sure it's running really sweet from, uh, from start up. But having said all of that, when the car's warm and when we're up and running, it drives brilliantly. Uh, the engine is very quiet, uh, minimal blue smoke from, uh, from the exhaust. It really is driving, driving well. What a wonderful Survivor Sierra. First sold in 1982, the Sierra replaced the ever popular Ford Cortina. And this car was developed under the project name Tony, which is derived from the Spanish for mountain range. Now it's fair to say that the new aerodynamic styling of the Sierra was considered way too radical for the conservative buying public of the time. Uh, and also, this being a hatchback car and the Cortina being a saloon, again, added to this car's poor reception. And it actually earned it the nickname, the Jelly Mold. Having said all of this, this aerodynamic style did serve a purpose and gave this car a drag coefficient of 0.34, which is vastly better than the outgoing Cortina's 0.45. And that meant this car delivered much improved fuel efficiency and higher speeds. Due to this reception and the fact that Ford was still selling a surplus of new Cortinas, the sales started fairly slowly for the Sierra, but from 1983 things picked up and this car actually became the second best selling car in the UK in 1983, in 1988, in 89, and was still the fifth selling best car in Britain in 1992. Now, early versions of the Sierra actually suffered with crosswind stability issues. And from 1985, strakes, which are small spoilers, were fitted here to, uh, to the rear quarter window. 
Now this car being an early car, it doesn't have the strakes. However, we do have the 1992 Ford Sierra XR 4x4, which does have them. And we look forward to featuring that in a future video. Our Sierra has the 1.6 overhead cam Pinto engine, producing 75 brake horsepower and fitted with the five speed manual gearbox from Standard. Now being a GL or a Grand Luxury, this car benefits from a number of uh, substantial upgrades when compared to the original base model, costing the original owner around £6,200. Uh, when they took this home and parked it on their drive, they would have been able to brag to neighbours about the lumbar support in the driver and passenger seat, about the cup pile carpet and about the plush Chelsea fabric interior. And this car being a post 83 model also benefits from electric mirrors and an electric remote boot release that's featured here in the in the center console. What's so great about our Sierra is the near perfectly preserved condition that we found it in. It has the original Blaupunkt Ford stereo here still fitted to the car and works well. Uh, it has this near factory finish uh, interior, blue interior and rarest of all this completely uncracked blue dashboard. This car was a real find. In 1987 came the most noticeable change to the Ford Sierra's timeline with a major facelift that also delivered a four-door saloon variant of the car called the Sapphire. And in 1993, after just 11 years in production, the Ford Sierra had to make way for Ford's new world car, the Ford Mondeo. In 1993, the Mondeo was put on sale and sold right across the world. However, there was an existing stock of Sierras and they remained on sale alongside the Ford Mondeo for a further two years. So here we are driving the Ford Sierra and I've got to say the engine, the clutch, the gearbox are all so much better than you'd expect from a near 40 year old car. And that reminds me, this car in April 2024 will in fact be tax exempt. Now what was also new to this all new Sierra back in 1982 was the cockpit layout, this dashboard display. And what you'll see is the instruments here in the center console are actually, ang are actually angled slightly towards the driver for ease of access. Also, there are a number of engine warning lights here, low fuel, low coolant, low oil, and also a seatbelt warning light. Stepping from an old Cortina into this all new Sierra must have been like stepping forward in time. I just love this old horseshoe steering wheel. And it was also worth mentioning that, that drag coefficient that I mentioned earlier in the video, that 0.34 was consistent with another great and all new car of, uh, of this time the Ferrari F40. I really enjoying driving this old car. It's got loads of zip. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure. Our Sierra GL is such a lovely example of a survivor car that I'm keen not to over-restore it. The car's charm lies in its imperfections and patina. In addition to the engine work, as we walk around the car, there are two or three bits of bodywork that require sensitive repair. This dent to the near side wing, which was done by one of Jack's family members sometime after he passed away, needs repair, albeit we must take care to retain the pinstripe and the rear seals need to be preserved before the existing rust takes hold. We look forward to getting this work done over the next few weeks. The originality of this car extends to every single piece of glass and the lights which all have the registration etching still in place, evidencing that nothing has been replaced. Also, the original stadium garage skew and number plates are on the car, as is the window sticker, which like it was stuck there only yesterday. On the subject of window stickers, Displayed in the rear screen of the Sierra is a Pensconor Wildlife Park sticker. Now this was a wildlife park near Neath in South Wales which closed in September 1998. Jack, the previous owner, was a keen photographer 
and frequented the wildlife park up until it closed to shoot images of the 200 resident animals. Part of our passion for cars is also understanding their history, and it is a real privilege for the boys and I to add our chapter to this Mark I Sierra story. We hope you've enjoyed joining us on our Ford Sierra GL Garage Find Adventure, where we've still got some mechanical and bodywork maintenance to do. Thanks for joining us. Please do like, comment and subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you again here at Pentel Cars, Cornish Car Collectors. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.